Gemma 12B, here we go. Okay, kick it off. Okay, so far so good. So far so good. Mistake, oh, 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 mistake. Okay, getting better, 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 better. Oh, oh, empty response, huh? So far, all right, okay. Oh, another mistake. Okay, so let's see what the 4B can do. All right, getting off to a good start. Oops, has a hazard. Harmful. Okay, that is not what I was looking for. Nope, nope. Okay. Okay, 60. Hmm, respectable. For a 4 billion, respectable. All right, so this is the 1B. Come on, little guy. Let's see what you can do. Uh-oh, not a good start. Not a good start. We're going to at least get one right. Are you going to get one right? No, not looking good. Not looking good. Okay. All right, I'm losing hope now. Don't think 1B is going to get anywhere with this. Oh, no. Sorry, 1B. In the last video, we saw the performance of Gemma 327 billion and compared it with the performance of GPT-4 O-Mini and Gemma 2. In this video, we're going to compare the performance of Gemma 3, 12B, 4B, and 1B against the 27B. Before we continue, I would like to ask you for a favor. As you can see, we are a very new channel with a small number of subscribers. So if you enjoy our content, please consider subscribing. It costs you nothing and it helps us grow. Also, check out our website, trompjudy.com. You can sign up and create your own customer valuations, or you can look at community valuations for a wide variety of use cases. We have published hundreds of evaluations and are releasing more every week. If there's one thing that you take away from this video, please let it be that you should be testing your own prompts with your own data to see what works best for your use case. Trump Judy helps you do just that. Now, back to the video. So before I go into the individual tests, let me quickly show you the high level scores. This is the harmful question detection test. This is a classification test. I'll go into the details of this test later on in the video. But as you can see, Gemma 3, 1 billion got 0, 4 billion got 60, 90 for the um, 12, and then 27B got it perfect. Um, and then if you look at this, this is the name to do recognition. Again, I'll go into the details later on. 12B and 27B come in about the same, and then performance drops off. And then if you look at the SQL query generation, again, 27B is on top as usual. And then, you know, the scores drop off with the 3B or the 12B, 4B and the 1B. And then the 1B got a, a zero here. And then I didn't do the 1B for this one. I, 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 I tried it, but it wasn't getting anywhere. So if you look at the scores, uh, the 27B comes in in a respectable 90, and then 75 for the 12B, and then 55 for the 4B. So let's dig into the tests. So this right here is the harmful questions detection test. This is a simple classification task where we give the LLM a question with specific instructions and expect it to categorize the question as harmful or not harmful based on the rules we provide. This test represents a very common use case in business applications, providing a first level of defense against getting the LLM to output sensitive or controversial information. There's no guaranteed way to defend every prompt injection attack, but a prompt like this provides at least that first level of defense. One of the benefits of using prompt duty is that you can constantly modify these instructions and test them against your validation data set. We included questions in different language, lead speak, various Unicode characters to truly challenge the model. For this, for this task. Gemma 327B performed flawlessly on this test, even succeeding on some questions that GPT-4 or Mini failed on. The 12 billion model made a couple of mistakes, but overall it performed very well. Let me show you some of the mistakes it made. So it made a mistake here and another one, I think it was somewhere here. 
And then the 4B made a lot of mistakes. It did manage to score a 60, but there are a few mistakes here, as you can see. And then the 1B did not perform well at all. The biggest fault being that it did out its output did not follow our instructions of using either the word harmful or not harmful. So now this is the named entity recognition test. This is a particularly challenging test because a single mistake in the output JSON results in a zero score. For context, even the frontier models like GPT-4 or Qua 3.7 Sonnet score around a 90-95% on this test. So the scores we're seeing, especially for the 12B or in the 27B, are pretty impressive here. The prompt here is asking the LLM to extract structured information from natural language questions, identifying first names, last names, locations, and organizations. We have specific rules like ignoring middle names, removing legal entity terms from company names, correcting misspellings, preserving the original language for names, but translating the locations and organizations to English. Most of the mistakes that Gemma models made, the 27B and the 12B, are translation mistakes. So for example, if you can see, it failed to translate St. Petersburg and fixing the Microsoft spelling here and so on. The 12B seems to have made some mistakes that the 27B didn't, and the 27B actually made some mistakes that the 12B didn't either. So for this task, these two models are pretty close in terms of performance. The 4 billion model made a lot of mistakes here, but it did manage to get a score of 40, which is respectable for its size. You can see some of the mistakes that it made here. And as expected, the 1B did not perform well at all at this task, making a lot of mistakes. So this test is the SQL query generation test. In this test, we provide the model with a database schema and a question, expecting it to generate a SQL statement that answers this question. We have a specific set of rules, no data modification statements, clear responses of the question can't be answered with the schema, and returning J results in the JSON format without explanation or comments. So as you can see, the performance steadily improves as the model size increases. Scores go from zero for the 1 billion model to 65 for the 4 billion, to 70 for the 12 billion, to 85 for the 27 billion. For some reason, the 1B model starts to respond in Hindi, which is very odd. Honestly, I'm surprised at how decent the 4B and the 12B models are for, this, for their size. And as you can remember from the previous test, the 27B actually outperformed GPT-4 O-mini in this test. So these are quite impressive results. So now for the final test, the Retrieval Augmented Generation Test. If you remember from the last video, this is where Gemma 327B has made the most improvements over Gemma 2. Although it's still not quite at GPT-4 or Mini's level here yet. In the prompt, we provide the model with a set of documents, which is marked on versions of PDF pages describing the performance of Frontier models. We ask the model to only use the data from the provided context, include citations, and refuse to answer unrelated questions and respond in Markdown format. Gemma 3 performed reasonably well here. The most significant mistake was answering a question about GPT 3.5 as if it was GPT 4.0. The correct response should have been to note that there is no information about GPT 3.5 provided in the context. However, as you can see, the 12 billion and the 4 billion models did not perform as well. And the 1 billion perf uh, didn't perform at all. In fact, I stopped the 1 billion test after the first few failures because I saw it wasn't going to perform well. So to conclude, I'm curious to know what you're using the Gemma models for. As you can see from the video, the 27 billion model is 
more than capable of handling a wide range of use cases. However, the 12 and the 4 billion models can be a decent alternative for edge devices. But I'm not sure if the 1 billion model is useful at all. What are you using the Gemma models for? Have you found the 1 billion model useful for any specific use cases? Let me know in the com comments below. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.